Leasing a condo in the Philippines. Five points you need to consider before you sign on the dotted line. Let's go. We're gonna talk about condominiums. We're gonna talk about problems with Airbnb. We're gonna talk about things that you have to know before you sign a lease. We're gonna talk about location. Super important things you probably haven't considered. We're gonna go over some red flags and cautions you need to be aware of. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about moving in. Things that you have to do when you move in to protect yourself. And lastly, number seven on the list, enjoy your new home. All right, so let's get rocking. This is Joey, welcome everybody. Five points of consideration. The number one is the, the condominium business and the, the domain of the condominium in the Philippines. In BGC, it's very prevalent. I'm sure it is in Cebu, and I know it's also prevalent in Makati. But in BGC, there are several street corners where you're gonna walk around and you're gonna find people trying to sell these as investment opportunities or investment properties on High Street, several points along High Street. They're gonna get you. If you are a Westerner, they're gonna stop you for sure. You're gonna get hit three or four times from one end of High Street to the other. The corner of 9th Avenue and 36th Street at Uptown Mall, one Uptown Residence, Uptown Parade, and Uptown Ritz, that corner, you're gonna get people handing out flyers trying to sell you these for investments. Also, if you go over to 8th Avenue, same thing. They're gonna be there, they're gonna be inside the malls. Sometimes they are actually even inside the building. So they're very aggressive and obviously this business model works or they would not be doing it. So Airbnb is used by the condo owners and BGC and Makati and I'm sure other places around the country where they have these, these buildings. So what's my problem with Airbnb? There are so many condominiums for rent in all of these buildings that you're gonna have a lot of problems. The first one is elevator congestion. You're in a 40 story, 45 story or taller building and you're trying to get in the elevator and there's dozens of people piled up in front of the elevators with luggage racks and suitcases on the weekends, constantly coming and going. These are all Airbnb people. They're blocking, they're clogging up the concierge. If you've had a package delivered or you need something, they're, they're, they're there all the time. They're sitting in the lobbies. So you always have this influx of strangers in the elevators and the concierge. Now, Unfortunately, I, I have, I think there are five units directly across the hall from me and there's constant noise. It was a constant fight with garbage in the hallways. Management team of the condos here at One Uptown, fabulous people. Um, I ended up complaining a few times, but they started finding people. And so they, they stayed on top of it, but what they can't prevent is the noise. So you have a one bedroom like mine, which is 400 square feet, just under 400 square feet, and they'll put two or three beds in there and you'll have five or six people piled up in one of these rooms. And what do they do? They come here to party for the weekend, so they come back drunk, they've got kids, the kids are bouncing balls, screaming, running up and down the hallway, dogs are barking. You just never know what you're gonna get and what you're gonna see from night to night because of the Airbnb people. So something very important to consider. Also, the pool. Make sure, you know, if, if there are a lot of Airbnbs, and I don't, there's really no way to get around this either. The pool, certain places have, have more problems than others. It's not really been a problem for me, but it has been at another building where a friend of mine said that he can't even get to his pool because every chair and every lounge, every table is occupied by Airbnb people and the residents can't even use the pool. So it's, it's really, it does have an impact on you as a resident in these buildings because these have not been sold as homes to people, they've been sold as investments. There you go, enough Airbnb ranting. Things you need to know before you sign a lease, are the bills paid and current up to date? Has the water bill and the electric bill been paid? Have the condominium dues been paid? These are things that you need to make sure of because you don't want to sign a lease, move into a place and find out that the electric bill hasn't been paid and they, they're gonna shut off the power or the water bill or the homeowner dues hasn't been paid and now they're gonna restrict your access to amenities. It is absolutely no problem if you have a good owner, but not all owners are responsive. So pool hours and the gym hours, these are, are, are important if you want to enjoy the amenities. I was recently looking for a, another place to live and one of the buildings I went to, the pool is open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., which means if you work and you come home from work, you can't even get in the pool.
So you've got to look at these things in advance. It would be pretty bad to go, yeah, I want to go down this evening and sit out at the pool. It's a wonderful evening. I'm going to go sit at the pool. Uh, it closes at six. So check out the gym, check out the amenities, make sure you understand the hours and the restrictions before you sign the lease because it may be something that you can't live with. Parking. Parking is another thing. If you're going to come to the Philippines and end up with a vehicle, which if you're a Westerner, being stranded, you know, for me, it's just not an option. As a rule, a parking space is 5,000 pesos a month. So 100 bucks a month is going to cost you for a parking space in a condominium if one is available. There may not be any available. Motorcycles where I live, parking is free. So there are two floors in the parking garage where you can park a motorcycle and it doesn't cost a penny. So I'm good with that, but just be aware that if you are going to move in and you want transportation, make sure that there's parking available for a motorcycle or that there's parking available for a car. Another thing you need to know before you sign a lease is can you directly contact the owner? Now this doesn't sound like it's that big a deal. Well, I've got the agent. No, the agent's not good enough. If you, for instance, need a repair on your air conditioner or your refrigerator, or you lock yourself out like I did, they refused to let a locksmith come in and unlock my door unless they had the owner's permission. And I've said many times before, I have great owners and the power of attorney for the owners is the owner's cousin and she's available. I can reach any of them by telephone, um, by uh, messenger, super easy to contact, super responsive. And when I locked myself out, it was just a matter of two or three minutes and I had a response from Aga saying, you know, hey, we give him permission, open the condo, he's locked out, he's good. So make sure that you can contact and communicate with the owner. If you send messages in the process and can't contact them, it's a huge red flag because it, if they don't pay attention to you before you've gotten, before they've gotten your money, after they've got you to sign that lease, then they're really not gonna pay any attention to you. So make sure that you can contact the person who has the power of attorney and authority to, to have repairs made, authorized repairs, and get you in if you get yourself locked out. And what other problem may arise that I haven't even thought of, but super important, I have a friend that's dealing with several repair issues in his condo, and the owner is about as responsive as a cricket. So, so super important. Pest control is another one. Roaches are huge. We're in the tropics. If you live in Louisiana or Florida, you know what I'm talking about. Make sure that the, the pest control is done and up to date and that the building has a good pest control. Uh, make sure the building has a good pest control program because even in, even in the nice high rise condos, the newer condos, there can be pests. So something to ask about, something to check. Look in there, you know, get a flashlight, open up under the counters and shine a light in there. And if you see cockroaches run, then it's probably a sign, right? And you can determine what that sign means. Uh, inverter, air conditioning. Make sure that the air conditioning has an inverter. If it's not the inverter style air conditioning, it's gonna run either full on or off, or full on or off. The inverter kind of adjusts on demand. The modern refrigerators are also inverter refrigerators and, ex and electricity here is expensive. I've gone on some trips and spent time out and I've left the air conditioning on in here and I've come back to almost a $200 electric bill. So that's for a less than 400 square foot condo. So make sure that you've got inverter units if, if possible. The newer ones do and they'll tell you for sure if they've got them because they'll brag about it. Probably even the logo on the AC will say inverter on the refrigerator. Mine says inverter. So you will know, but it's super important unless you don't mind paying high electric bills. Like that's for the, that's it for the must know things. And there, there may be some others, add them in the comments. Next is location. Location is super important, especially if you are in a, in a popular area where there's a lot of activity at night. Uptown Mall, Uptown Parade. The Uptown Parade has several nightclubs in it. And then there's Uptown Park Suites 1 and 2. And they are directly across the street. If you're on the side facing 9th Avenue, you're going to hear a lot of noise. You're going to hear the music thumping. And it will be a problem for most people. If you're on the side facing the pool or maybe facing 8th, um, 8th Avenue, you're probably OK. Location, super important. Also, another thing to think about the location within the unit is the trash room. Now, if they have a trash room, some places have pickup where they will come and pick up your trash at a certain time, once or twice a week. 
put your trash out with X amount of hours early and they come and they pick it up. Other places have trash rooms and I don't care how hard they work. If you put a dumpster in a room and then you walk back and forth past that room, people have to go in, open and close that door to put their garbage in. That hallway is gonna smell like garbage. You know, if you wanna live next to a dumpster, that's your choice. But make sure that you understand where the trash room is so that you're not in a condo next to or two or three doors down from the trash room because you don't wanna open your door and, and be hit with the trash room smell every day. Okay, that's it for the location. There are a few red flags, agents acting like used car salesmen, and I understand that they want to sell and, and they are, they're trying to influence you. And there's a, there's a uh, Robert Cialdini's book, Influence, it's a great book if you haven't read it, but he's got, I think, six principles, but one of them is scarcity. And, and scarcity is you better buy it, it's the last one. Oh, I better buy it, right? So these are ways to influence people. You will hear from them. Well, you better sign the lease now yeah, right. You know, there are literally hundreds of units available in BGC and Makati. I opened up Lamudi, which is an app, and I think I had 42 pages for one bedrooms. 42 pages of listings for one bedrooms. And that's within a certain price range. So there are hundreds to choose from. Do not get in a hurry. If you come here, get an Airbnb or whatever, rent a room for a month, and then give, give yourself the time to go and check and look and explore and look at all these things and don't be afraid to walk away and say no because there are a ton of units there. If they start telling you, well, we might be able to negotiate down, well, that means for some reason other people haven't been renting it. And yeah, it's nice to be able to negotiate down. I would definitely always make an offer, but make sure that, that you don't have an agent that's trying to pressure you into signing something because it's not in your best interest. Non-responsive agents, if you inquire about a unit and it takes two or three or four days for an agent to reply, then really it's not even worth replying back to them because you don't want somebody that's gonna take two or three days. And that's the problem with some of these, these online listings is you'll, you'll send a message and contact somebody, you leave a voicemail, you may viber them or whatever. If they don't reply to you, move on. Life's too busy and there are too many out there and there's some really great brokers and agents out here that are willing to help you. They will work hard. Juvie Joy, Juvie is fantastic. She's become a good friend. I've been talking to Juvie for about a year and a half. I've been here for just about a year now and I still see Juvie on the street. I still bump into her a couple times a month and, and she continues to be a top performer, but she's very responsive. And if you tell her you have a 40,000 peso budget or a 50,000 peso budget, she's gonna find, she's gonna start giving you options for 5,000 pesos below maybe. And what she did to me, she says, well, you said your budget was this. And you know, by the time you add electric bill and everything else, so I wanna show you units here so that you don't exceed that. So she's very thoughtful. I'll put, a, I'll put Juvie's contact information below. She is a great person. If you need an Airbnb, I'll also put one for my friend, Andrew. Drew is a great guy. I'll put contact information for Drew also, and you can reach out to him. Okay, requiring post-dated checks. The next thing, if they require post-dated checks, walk away. Uh, you're not gonna have a checking account as a tourist here on a tourist visa, and they're not gonna accept the United States checking account. But you need to do wire transfer or nothing. There is no protection for you or for them by them having post-dated checks. Really, it's a big risk for you because if they don't pay the bills, if they don't do whatever they're supposed to do, if there's an earthquake, if there's a fire or whatever, they've got your post-dated checks and they can cash them. So absolutely no to post-dated checks. And, and if they don't like it, that's just too bad. I have not heard anybody say that they won't accept a wire transfer. You see a lot of listings, too much rent, too much deposit, and post-dated checks. Nobody that I have heard or talked to still requires post-dated checks. They say it, but they will accept a wire transfer. Next thing, understanding the contract. When you sign a lease, there's gonna be a contract. If you are not used to reading legal documents uh, and it's something that you aren't comfortable with, hire an attorney to review it. Attorneys are very cheap but you can, for the most part, read these. You'll find that they are very, very one-sided. They give the owner all the protections. And from what I understand um, from attorneys is that the judges do not look favorably on these contracts. There is a statute that says what the landlords have to give to the tenants. 
But for the most part, the contract's going to be one-sided. But if you've got something where the water doesn't work, the air conditioning doesn't work and whatever, you will have a pretty good chance of getting out of the contract. But make sure that you, if you don't understand it, have it reviewed by an attorney. Also, don't be afraid to add clauses. The law in the Philippines is pretty, pretty similar. The, the, uh, the substantive law is almost a rubber stamp to what we have in the United States. Procedural law is different because there are no juries, but you're not gonna, it's not just because you're white that you're going to, or you're a Westerner, that you're gonna be on the losing end of this. There's a lot of that stuff said, but have some faith in the system. Sign out what you don't want in a contract and ink in what you do want. If they don't agree to it, negotiate it or go somewhere else. Nobody put a gun to your head. You're not gonna die. That's why I say give yourself plenty of time to figure out where you wanna live and negotiate and determine whether or not it's good for you. Okay, notaries, after you sign everything before you can move in, they're gonna take everything and get it notarized. And it's funny because the copy you get back is gonna say in my presence they signed. It's it's just a, it's a formality here, but it's, it's almost like the traffic laws. It's a suggestion but the contracts do hold weight, review it, have it reviewed, whatever. Enough of the contracts. All right, moving in. Make sure that you get a receipt for any monies paid, especially if it's cash. If it's a wire transfer and it's gone to the person, you're gonna have all that information, who you gave the money to, the date, the account number, and, and obviously the name of the person on the account's gonna match or the transfer is not gonna go through. But if you hand cash, you know, I handed over cash in the beginning to, uh, to do my lease, Make sure that if it's not somebody that you know and trust, make sure, and it's probably a good idea with, with all of them, videotape you handing the money to the people because it may be somebody pretending to be somebody else. Now in a condo unit, I don't think it's that big of a deal because there's limited access, there's some pretty good controls, but if you're renting that or leasing a house, for sure, make sure that you have the identification. Get the driver's license, they're gonna want yours. Get their ID, photograph their ID, photograph them holding the ID. Now I did this for a living, it's important. They could steal an identification and say, that's, that's not me, somebody stole my driver's license. You photograph the ID, then photograph the ID next to their, next to their face. Videotape you handing them the cash and, and, and stating here is 150,000 pesos for the two months rent. And, and then you're covered. Also, make sure that you videotape every part of the home or the condominium. There are things you're not going to see until after you've signed. Like there could be some 3M adhesive tape or something used to be hanging on a wall that you didn't notice. There will be things that we miss because we are humans. Video while they are there and in the frame and talking so that if there is any Anything when it's time for you to move out that they say, hey, you damaged this. No, it's on the video right here. It's inarguable. So videotape everything. Now inventory items. A lot of these places are furnished or semi-furnished. Make sure that you are there or you are at least uh, able to review everything. Now I wasn't here when Aga did the inventory, but I went through and checked and it was, it was, it was 100% squared away so we were good with the inventory but you know the number of towels the silverware the plates the dishes you know all these things the bedding the pillows the furniture all these things will be on the inventory sheet make sure that everything that's listed is actually there because you don't want to pay for it when you leave this 36 inch uh, smart tv there was no 36 inch smart tv well it's on the inventory right here and you signed it so make sure that you review that now that's it pretty much for moving in. If I've missed anything, please put it in the comments. Let us all know. You may not have a juvie to help you. You may not have owners as transparent and as easy to contact and deal with as I have. So these things are super important. Enjoy your new home. That's it after you move in. You can support the channel by donating directly to me or you can even buy me a coffee. Links are in the description below. Hit the like and subscribe button. Remember, better thinking equals a better life. And until next time, put some adventure into your life. Joey out.